Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods this morning. Wake up, guys. You know, there's always drama in Dallas. It makes it easier to be a Dallas Cowboys YouTuber because there's always something going on. Yesterday was the first day of padded practices, and so far we haven't heard about anybody getting hurt, which is great because training camp is when you're holding your breath, praying that you do not have a, a bad injury. You know, we look up 95 for me at New York, and they're losing wide receivers left and right. You know, Victor Cruz is like, man, I can come back and do some salsa dancing for you guys, you know. And um, you don't want to lose anybody in a preseason game or training camp. You want to have them out there going tooth and nails for the regular season. So we're on to day number two of padded practices. We'll definitely have more later on today after they have practice because, well, we're on the East Coast. And they're probably still asleep because it's about 6 a.m. right now there. So Jerry Jones has changed. Jerry Jones has a sense of urgency, as I, as I believe the Dallas Cowboys do right now. Jerry Jones has always been that player-friendly guy, the coach-friendly guy, the fan-friendly guy. But now it seems like it's truly focused on one thing and one thing only, and that is getting to the Super Bowl. And I can't say that that's honestly been the case all of the years, the last few years. Because we've gone into seasons where it's like, you know, Jason Garrett, his job is safe. You know, he's part of the family. We know that there's some mistakes that get made. And, you know, maybe we don't get as far as we like. But we're, we're all in with Jason Garrett. He's going to coach the Cowboys for a long time. Well, they didn't give him that extension. And Jerry Jones, of course, yesterday basically said, you know, with the talent that we've amassed, that you would expect to have won some Super Bowls. And, you know, the sense of urgency is there. And he recognizes that. You've got a good collection of young talent, and you don't know how long you can keep them together. There's free agency, there's injuries, there's age, and you only have a window that's so long. And so Jerry Jones is letting Jason Garrett know, listen, I love you, man. You're, you're family. But if you can't get the job done, we're going to get somebody else that can. And you can look at that now with our situation with Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott, who's in Cabo, working out. Now, I'm not mad about him being in Cabo because Cabo is where he went when we had the six-game suspension, and he worked out, came back still in shape and stuff. As long as I don't see Zeke Elliott and TMZ or anything like that, that I know he's there preparing for the season, I'm good. But Jerry Jones had said that he looked at paying, you know, Zeke Elliott, Todd Gurley money. That we're going to get to that, but you have a sense of urgency because of Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. You gave up a number one draft pick for Amari Cooper. He's a free agent after this year. Same thing with Dak Prescott. You need to get those deals done so you can breathe a sigh of relief. Zeke, he's still on his rookie contract. You know, his technically his pay for this year is like $3.8 million. It's $9 million next year. But it gives you some time. But Zeke recognizes that, listen, I am a commodity, and I've seen what happened to DeMarco Murray after he had that great season. You just let him walk. He didn't get that big payday from the Cowboys, and I'm giving you everything. Now, Jerry Jones basically kind of dropped the gauntlet yesterday again after dropping the bomb about Jason Garrett. He kind of went on and said, you know, in today's NFL, you don't need to have the lead leading rusher to win. Well, that may be true. For most teams, but you have to understand the way this team has evolved. This team was built to run the football. As Tony Romo's career ended up having more and more injuries, they started drafting big offensive linemen that were great run-blocking linemen. And you could see what it ended up being with uh, DeMarco Murray over 1,800 yards. And they realized that this is a formula for us to win. We can be more balanced as an offense. We can run out the clock, okay? We can run over people. And that has been this formula. That's why you drafted Zeke Elliott as the number four pick in the draft. If you draft a back at that point, at that high, they have to be a focal point of your team. 
which is why he's won the rushing title two out of three years. Why you look at your team and say your team is as good as it's been and being able to make it to the playoffs and win playoff games, it's because you have that back. And here's what you have to understand is, give me an example, Dak Prescott, play action pass. Now these numbers are skewed a little bit because Zeke Elliott is almost on, on the field all the time. But here's the thing, play action pass, okay? Play action pass, if you don't understand what that is, is you're basically faking a run. For example, you've got Zeke running up the middle like he's taking a dive. Dak is faking the handoff, pulling it away from him, maybe doing a bootleg, you know, going outside, looking for a quick pass. So play action passing. And what happens is the linebackers freeze and try and go to that action and fill the hole. The safety gets frozen. On play action passes with Zeke Elliott, 71% uh, completions and 16 TDs and one interception. Play action passing without Zeke, 54% completions and just two TDs and one interception. Because teams don't respect your other running back without Zeke being there. He draws attention. Another one is with Zeke on the field, Dak completes 68% of his passes without only 62 Zeke on the field, 48 TDs versus 15 interceptions. Without him, 19 TDs, 10 interceptions. And that's major. So he is an important cog to your system. And make no mistake about it, the Cowboys are built a lot different than most teams in the NFL today that are just high-flying, passing teams. And so with Jerry Jones, I think Jerry Jones took this kind of personal on this one. They signed Alfred Morris, and Alfred Morris um, – when he left the Redskins, averaged about 3.7 yards a carry. But I have this theory, um, GWD equals plus one. Running behind the Dallas Cowboys offensive line, the Great Wall of Dallas, is equal to one more yard for a running back. Darren McFadden was averaging like 3.3 yards a carry in Oakland till, for three years straight. He comes to Dallas, he averages 4.3. Um, Alfred Morris averaged 4.8 yards in 2017 with the Cowboys. 4.8. Now, he was in San Francisco last year, 428 yards, uh, 3.9 a carry. And that's not bad when you consider that team sucked. They didn't have a quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo was gone. So when you look at him coming to Dallas, yeah, he can pick up some yards. But his shortcomings are he's nowhere near as good a blocker as Zeke Elliott, and he's not a good catcher out the backfield as Zeke Elliott, and he is not Zeke Elliott. But let's take a look at some of the highlights of him from 2017 taking on the yeah. Washington Redskins. And you can see, he runs great hey. between the tackles. There's no disputing that he is a downhill runner. And with this, I'm not mad about this because there's not like, you know, Alvin Kamara is out there as a free agent that you can just pick up. He can make moves, he can take on some hits, and he gets positive yards. And quite frankly, if he's at a reasonable rate, even with Zeke Elliott back, I might not mind having him back in our backfield. And I tell you why. Because you think of the 16-game season as a marathon. You think about how much that we used Zeke Elliott as the season progressed last year. You could see that Zeke didn't have quite as much pop in that step, and you could see that some of those bumps and bruises started kind of slowing him down a little bit. And make no mistake about it, we need him for 16 games and hopefully for three more after that. We want to have him going in fresh, ready to rock and roll. And you look at the Rams, who, thank God for them, that they end up having another uh, bellwether back because Ty Gurley with the uh, right up the middle. Uh, they, he saved the season. And Lord knows the two of them ran rough shots. This line is opening up big holes and Mars is running through 15 there. Trayvon Austin, um, that you have that's having carries in the NFL. You have no experience. But this again, too, might be a message to Zeke Elliott that, listen, you're going to be here and be part of the team, but we're going to get somebody else. Running running they can't stop it. So, 11 yards. we can get these two sides together. 
Lawrence to 126 on the night. At practice, getting ready for the season. I'm hoping that Alfred Morris capping off a big night um, against his old team. Mari Cooper, Touchdown, Dallas. Yesterday. Focal came for a few moments and things like that. So they're working on those deals and you know, they've also made an offer to Zeke Elliott. So don't panic just yet. Third and five from the, the 13 yard line. At least let's go. End zone. Dance goes up and gets it. Touchdown, Cowboys. That's possible. Flag is down. You don't want to be here hanging out with nothing. To you. you know, the great thing is, whenever so you see relax. Dez getting mad at nobody, happy. you know something good's going to happen. As Stephen Jones says, player acquisition is a 365-day-a-year job. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, it's time for me to get to my day job. I will see you guys later.